Hello, Lucas Nation fans. Welcome back to another exciting podcast. This is the Lucas Chat Podcast with your host, Kennedy Lucas. Hopefully, you guys will enjoy today's uh, session. We're very, very excited to be doing a podcast here today. Now, this podcast is a little bit different. Of course, we don't have our co-star of Tyrus Lester and James Myers. They're going to be doing their own E3 addresses Cyrus is going to be doing Xbox, and James is going to be doing Nintendo. I will be covering Sony, uh, PlayStation, for today's Lucas Chat podcast because uh, Sony is one of my favorite consoles. You know, I still collect games for my PlayStation 3. Today is a very special day because I wanted to do a sort of an E3 2016 Sony PlayStation address recap video and for the podcast because I do have my own intake. I do have my own... Um, my own feel and I do have my own kind of thing with E3 and for the next future of video games to come. So thank you guys for tuning in for the Lucas Chat podcast here on YouTube, Daily Motion, and also on SoundCloud.com, SoundCloud.com, KLB Entertainment's on SoundCloud, and you guys could hear our great podcast for this weekend. Now this weekend is going to be great. We're not going to be doing a weekend vlog this weekend because we want to uh, sort of advertise for the Lucas Chat podcast this weekend for all three podcast shows when they do their own session. But we're going to start off with Sony's PlayStation 2006, uh, 2016 E3 uh, podcast. So hopefully you guys enjoy the show. Now, I do, I did, we all catch E3, the whole conference, and the conference is about time you're seeing this. The conference will be over, uh, hence that the weekend vlog is going to be uploaded. Uh, the podcast is going to be uploaded later this weekend. So the, the E3 convention is going to be just about over about time you're seeing this video. But I do want to do a recap, uh, especially for Sony. Because Sony's been in the family, has been in my life, and I've been playing on Sony for about five years now. It's going on six, and uh, I really do love it. They came a long way. They really did come a long way for Sony and E3 uh, and these new titles and these new games that they got coming out. So today, this is going to be fantastic. I'm just going to do a kind of a quick recap uh, for each segment that they played here at E3 2016 for Sony. Now, once you're seeing this, of course, if you go to the... Pinterest account via the KLP network you guys can see that of course on we changed our name from KLP Studios video on demand to KLP Entertainment's video on demand where you guys can see KLP Entertainment's videos alongside with any other live streams or conferences or different shows that we put out uh, from YouTube so you guys can go to my Pinterest account type in KLP Entertainment go to KLP Entertainment video on demand you guys can see all three of the E3 press conference, especially Sony. Now, let's go ahead and get started with this podcast. Now, Sony has come a long way. It really has come a long way, guys. And once they started out this conference, they started off with this, uh, I guess he's one of the, kind of one of the uh, orchestra leaders for the hit game, God of War. We're going to talk a little bit about God of War later on in today's podcast. They started to show off with this um composer uh he has his band and he started and they started playing uh songs for from the god of war series and the god of war the new game that's coming out in 2000 uh i think they said later in 2016 or 17 or early 2017 um so that was a great addition uh it's great that sony try to find different ways and try to find different specs and to start off with the orchestra for E3's press conference for Sony was fantastic. I really did enjoy um, having those uh, orchestra players. They play the, they do the thing, and they really do it. Now, of course, we're gonna move on. The show moves on to Sean Layton. Sean Layton is the CEO of Sony Inter uh, Interactive Entertainment. I we also noticed once we're watching the um, once we're watching the uh, uh, watching the pro the press conference. They change the, the name from Sony Computer Entertainment to Sony Interactive Entertainment. I think that's a good look. Of course, we did talk about that in previous podcast shows, but to have that change the name and it's, it fits well and it sounds great, it's, been, it's phenomenal and it's fantastic. And I think they're going to stick with that name because it sticks and it's, it's more professional-like. So having it changed to Sony Interactive Entertainment was, was fantastic. Um... I, I'm not mad at it. I really am not mad at that change in that name because it fits well and it sticks well uh, like glue. It really does stick. And I think they're trying to move forward and try to produce out what's next for uh, Sony. 
So we're going to move on here. Uh, of course, they advertise God of War. The main character gets some redesigns. They got they kind of change out some things and has some uh, different graphic style. He's more buffer uh, in the game. Of course, you, you'll see more bosses and more different characters. They show the demo off was when i think it was it was from the game it's from gameplay of course i think they look like his son i guess um trying trying to train and learn how to be a warrior like the main character he's kind of young so he's making mistakes he's not doing it right he's making all sorts of mistakes but later in the game we'll soon find out that will he become stronger um they played this boss battle into the press conference and i thought it was very fast paced and i thought it was, it was this going to be kind of interesting to most gamers uh i think what games companies are trying to do is trying to develop the big boss fight as later we've seen uh for xbox's press conference you know final fantasy they had a big boss but we'll, we'll let tyrus go in more depth of that but um you had a big boss battle and you uh seen it a lot and you know i think it's gonna god of war is gonna be the next thing of course there might be uh, more God of War series for PlayStation 4, but seeing that new edition remade of God of War redesigned and redefined, I thought that was very fantastic uh, going into the show because God of War was one of the franchises for the PlayStation series, so to see it come back was fantastic. Another game that they kind of advertise out more is um, uh, The Last uh, Guardian is what they're calling it. The Last Guardian is going to be out October 26th. I'm thinking of 2016. Of course, they kind of advertise it for E3 2015, but it got laid back and it's got held up because they were still kind of in development and wasn't ready yet. So they pushed it out for this year. So October 26th, 2016, we are expected to see The Last Guardian. Of course, we're going to see the the game movie and see if we can get it on klp network's video on demand tab but uh seeing the the, la the last guardian it's fresh it's a it's a whole different chapter it's a whole different story um they really bring out more elements for it they bring out a lot of graphic style and they bring out a lot of weird looking characters like the little cat thing that looks like a bird that can fly i don't know what they're calling it uh that's the little boy's best friend into the story mode so it's more of a friendship type video game um and a great storytelling uh, i've seen gameplay of it and i think it's gonna be great i think it's gonna be i think it's gonna sell well um uh, last year for last year's e3 2015 i was a little bit skeptical about the game i didn't think it was going to B is what people are hyping it up to be, but now that it's getting more hype, it's, it's getting a, lo a lot of hype in the in the world, and to see that the game might, it, it, you know, it might, it might, it might, it just might be phenomenal. It just might be great. Um, so now the next game that they advertised for Sony's press conference at E3 2016 is um horizon zero dawn of course it's a new game leading a female role character i really do like it when video games companies develop a female main character in video games just like the hit game remember me if you guys know what that game is comment below give me a shout out but remember me was a game that came out later in the years and it had a strong female character as the main character so alongside with horizon zero dawn uh this game here is is phenomenal, and I've seen gameplay of this of not only on E3 but on different YouTube channels, and I really do think this game will hit number one because people like that strong female role, especially I do, and to see that it develops great and she's very like badass in this in this video game is fantastic. Um, it's a little bit different. It's like you're going back in time, but you're not really going back in time because your enemies, these animals, the enemies are made out of robotics and mechanics, but it's set back to an old time where you had villages and you had to hunt to eat and you had to survive uh, in wildlife to survive in the wildlife. So, you know, uh, it's kind of a time travel, but not really. So I really think they really brought up a good element for that. Um, some people are saying that it looks just like the Transformers video games where it, the enemies transform into different elements. Uh, I really don't agree with that. I think it's storytelling. You know, that's what Sony is about for their video game and for E3 2016 for Sony's pre press conference is they want to tell a story. They want to have all these great writers and these great video game developers and these programmers 
to come together into the gaming community and to have it out, to have some good product and have some good themes out for their consumers to buy and to make, not only to make money, but to tell a story and make history. Um, and I really do think with Horizon Zero Dawn, they're really going to scratch that surface because number one that strong female character you have all the female gamers out there wanting to go buy this game uh for that sole purpose um even i might just go out and buy the game um it makes sense the story mode seems very exciting and i i can't wait for i can't for, wait for the finished development of this game because i think this game will be a great addition to the sony team uh, of course of course you're going around the world and you're helping people and you're going around you're going through different elements and you're meeting people um the next game that they brought up for the sony press conference is um i forgot what they're calling this game but this is main character named connor and he is a android um we're trying to see if we can get word of what this game is because i forgot what they called called this game um as we wait to get some updates here but when you guys are seeing the um when you guys are seeing the e3 press conference hopefully on kelpie entertainment's uh hopefully on kelpie entertainment's uh video on demand tab but you know you guys can also see this also on youtube as well we don't really have a list of games yet um Yeah, we really don't we don't have the list of this this name uh, i forgot what this game was called um but this game here if you guys see it you guys know what i'm talking about um but it seems very exciting you get to choose your own story you get to choose your own theme and you get to choose your own storyline you're you're playing this this android named connor he's going around the building trying to solve the case and uh, there's this enemy who has this little girl and you he has to save the little girl and you have to kind of go back in time You have to decide to make the right decisions to save the little girl um, Hopefully there's a little bit more story to that um, As I was going as I was seeing e3 It only showed that gameplay of that one Storyline you're saving that girl and you get to choose different decisions. So hopefully It has a little bit more to it Um I don't know if they're trying to develop that out for a free download or a download code to get that little indie game, but if they have a little bit more, uh, if it had a little bit more story mode, then it will be worth the buy, but um, as we're seeing on E3, it, it, the story mode was a little bit too short. And I don't think uh, people it will sell if it's if that's just it. Now, if they have a little bit more stories and a little bit more campaign that they didn't want to show for, uh, if they didn't want to show all of it on E3, then that's completely understandable because you don't want to give it all away. But um, hopefully, it's not um, hopefully it's not too too short. Now, the next game that they brought up, of course, they're trying to they're kind of, they're trying to advocate a little bit more for VR virtual reality especially for the playstation vr of course you had a whole bunch of other games like scary games such as resident evil 7 that has been kind of confirmed from e3 resident evil 7 will be coming out very soon can't wait to see it um and we're very excited to see that now they didn't really show too much of that um they didn't really show too much of that as well as um they didn't show too much on the Resident Evil, but hopefully uh, it becomes something greater. Um, very excited for for Resident Evil uh, Seven. Hopefully it becomes. Hopefully it becomes great. Uh, the pri the previous Resident Evil games has been phenomenal. Uh, of course, we added a couple Resident Evil uh, movies and video game movies towards the KLP Network's video on demand tab. So to see that out coming, that's is fantastic. Um, now the next thing what, that we're, we're trying to see here, and we're looking at the three press conference right now so we can not miss anything. Uh, so we're just, we're just waiting on this to load up. Um, Cause we're trying to get the list of all the games that were, that were talked about for E3's press conference. 
And we just got confirmed, of course, the official name for the Resident Evil is Resident Evil 7 Biohazard um, for the VR. So I think that's going to that's gonna be fantastic for all of those VR people out there. Um, I probably won't be able to, to play this this certain type of game for VR because I don't even have the PlayStation 4 yet. But one of these days I probably will. Um, so when that game comes out, of course... Uh, for VR, they have the VR finally uh, releasing on October 13th, 2016. Of course, uh, this is something Sean Layton had um, announced for the press conference. Of course, he said it's going to be released out October 13th, 2016. It's $400 uh, in America. So that's kind of a how I feel about that, really, uh, Lucas Nation fans. I feel that that's a little bit steep for some headsets. Um, I don't know. It could just be me. It could just be me thinking uh money wise i just think for a headset i think 400 dollars is a little bit steep in my opinion hopefully maybe they'll kind of dim down that price because with that kind of money you can just get a whole nother new playstation 4 um of course with these game consoles of course they're going to retail for 400 dollars but if headset really releasing and having that for 400 dollars I don't think that's worth the buy, in my opinion. But of course, oh, I, <laughs> of course, many gamers have different opinions. But I think four hundred dollars for some headsets uh, is kind of kind of steep. I think they should retail that back to about maybe two hundred dollars or two fifty. Um, I guess what you're paying for, though, they did advertise that they're going to get fifty games uh, already jam packed into the headset once it's uh, released and launched out for retail stores. But um, would I pay that much for some headsets? Probably not, because that is that is a lot of money. Now, of course, they did try to advertise a lot for the Star Wars community. Of course, we do know a whole bunch of Star Wars games has been uh, released out in the past. And, of course, Star Wars Battlefront from DICE has been released out for both Xbox One and PlayStation 4. Uh, there's this new game called uh, Star Wars... Air Mission, I'm thinking that's what they call it, Air Mission. Of course, you're using your virtual reality uh, headset. I've seen gameplay over at E3. It looks kind of dizzy. I think if you're not motion sickness, you'll you'll do fine. But if you get sick a lot motion-wise, I think that's more of a uh, more of a gimmick. And if I were to play that new Star Wars game where you're in one of the ships, you're in space, you're moving around like that, I think I would get sick playing the game. And they did kind of advertise another new game from batman the batman series of course they're calling it batman arkham vr i don't know they really didn't show too much gameplay of this uh, hence it is still in development but i'm excited to see how that pans out uh solely because batman i've loved batman games i've been playing batman games ever since so to have that out for vr for a batman game hopefully it's not gimmicky hopefully it's a full-blown game that you get to play batman and you're in this virtual reality of arkham city and you're fighting the bad guys such as joker so hopefully that will not uh be so disappointing of course they did kind of advertise most of the final fantasy games being for vr um as well so you know very excited for final fantasy a lot of people are excited for final fantasy i don't i, I really don't get i mean i've seen i've seen story mode a Final Fantasy. I've seen gameplay. It looks very exciting. Uh, I really don't have a Final Fantasy game in my collection. Uh, I don't know why I don't yet. Uh, who knows? I just, I don't know. Uh, but a lot of people are excited for Final Fantasy. Now, the next game that they also advertised for this press conference from Sony is Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. Now, I noticed when the crowd had seen this on E3, they were, they were not so excited because they... They had already released this trailer, and it was like, oh yeah, we forgot, Call of Duty Infinity Warfare is coming out. Um, Xbox didn't really announce so much for the Call of Duty Infinite Warfare to be out for that system. Hopefully Tyrus can dig up more information on that, and hopefully we'll have a lot of more information of that as well. But seeing this trailer, I kind of already knew that what was coming. Um, of course, they released this trailer months before E3, so a lot of fans kind of already knew what was to come for Call of Duty. Uh, this Call of Duty looks fast-paced, and it looks fun. Hopefully, it's not the same old Call of Duty that we've seen in the previous games. Um, a lot of fans don't. Ten a lot of fans tend to think the Call of Duty series are 
exactly the same and to me yeah kind of i've seen i played different call of duty games and it seemed kind of the same thing so hopefully infinite warfare is a little bit just a little bit different from all the rest of course when you order your call of duty infinite warfare you're going to get modern warfare remastered edition only if you order uh pre-order the game when it gets ready to release out um it, modern warfare was great uh i actually did enjoy um the modern warfare 1 2 and 3 so you know to see that it's getting remastered is fantastic for all the our old hardcore call of duty fans now of course sean Layden did also announce crash bandicoot remastered i'm not really a big fan of crash uh a lot of playstation friends probably gonna have a hate comment in, in the comment section but i'm I'm not a big fan of Crash, really. I never really played Crash Bandicoot. Uh, of course, he is uh, also advertising the new Skylanders, Imaginators. Again, I'm not a big fan of the gimmicky toy-looking games like Skylander and Disney uh, Infinity and all of that. Um, another game they did kind of advertise is the Lego series. They're, late, they're advertising out Lego Star Wars The Force Awakens from the movie to the Lego video game to be released out for uh, PlayStation 4. Uh, I really do like Lego. Uh, I really do want to add to my collection Lego the Avengers video game that came out, what, last month? So I see that they're still trying to do it, and it looks like they took the scenes kind of like how they did for the Avengers video game. They added the scenes and the cutscenes from the actual movies onto this video game. And it, sound, it sounds like they did the same thing for the Star Wars. They used the Star Wars scripts and uh, the scripts and the lines from the actual movie onto the video game. I think that's a good niche for um, that's a good niche for Tento Games and Lego. I think that's really good. Another thing that came back that was kind of a surprise for E3 for Sony is Kojima Production. Yes, Kojima. He Hideo Hideo, if I pronounce this man's name right, Hideo. Kojima has came back for 2016's uh, press conference for E3 for Sony. Again, last year they had some problems with him being on the show. Uh, E3 2015, they had some problems. But to see him back for 2016 is very exciting. Now, when he came out the curtain, I thought it was going to be another Metal Gear Solid game. But it's something new that he's doing. It's, he's calling it Death, uh, Death Stranding. Again, that's Death Stranding. Uh, of course, the new game for Kojima Productions. It kind of looks like a Metagear type of game, but it's something completely different. Of course, it was a kind of a bizarre trailer. You're seeing a baby and the main character. Um, so I can't wait to see more gameplay of that. Um, I can't. I can't really wait to see more gameplay of Death Stranding. Uh, hopefully it becomes a great game. It becomes a great series. Kind of like how Metal Gear Solid series were. Um, even though I really didn't really get so much into Metal Gear Solid. It's still a great series. And to see that Kojima, Kojima came back with another new game. And was able to come for this E3's press conference. Was a big surprise for all of us Sony, Sony fans out there. Now the next thing they also advertise for E3. Is a new Spider-Man game. And boy I've seen his costume in this game. It looks, it looks really good. The costume looks fantastic. Now I wonder if they're calling it Spider-Man. The video game for PlayStation 4, or are they calling it Spider-Man, the Spectacular Spider-Man? Yes, the Spectacular Spider-Man is the new line of Spider-Man movies that is going to be released out later in, theater, in theaters. So I wonder, are they calling it the Spectacular Spider-Man, or are they just going to keep that name? Uh, seeing gameplay of this uh, Spider-Man game is fantastic. It's very fast-paced. Spider-Man gets whole nother new moves and gets whole nother a whole nother new style, whole nother new costume, and whole nother new move. So hopefully they rename that name and call it the Spectacular Spider-Man. That is my speculation for that game. The next game they also advertise for E3 is Days Gone. Days Gone was kind of the focus point for E3. Um, they played kind of a trailer, movie cinematic trailer for E3 at the beginning of the press conference, but at the end of the press conference, they showed some gameplay so that was kind of the focal focus point for e3 was days gone um my take on this game okay you know all right let's uh let's see what this game got really um i really didn't the gameplay eh, i mean it kind of reminds me of uh, last of us uh 
the Last of Us games. That's where it kind of reminds me. And it kind of also reminds me of the Uncharted games as well. So, once this game get out of development, hopefully we'll, hopefully it becomes something great. Um, it's still early early to tell for this game, but it seems just shoot and run. That's what I'm seeing from the gameplay, and that's what I thought, what I was seeing for E3 this year so hopefully maybe it becomes something greater i'm not gonna downgrade downsize and downgrade the game because the game does have high potential to be something greater um but you know we'll, we'll see of course they did have more games like uh deuces do du, do x um what's what is mankind divided i said when I did the unboxing, I said Human Mankind is Mankind Divided. That is the name of that game. And they have so many other more games coming out for the um, PlayStation 4. They didn't really show too much for PlayStation Vita. So that lets me know right there that PlayStation Vita is completely, completely dead from the system. Because they're completely avoiding the fact that they have the PlayStation Vita. Uh, there are still a couple of games for that console, but we did not get much of we did not get much of uh, PlayStation Vita games, and it kind of it makes me upset because I had high hopes for PlayStation Vita, but to see that there is no new games for PlayStation Vita, that lets the fans know okay, PlayStation Vita is dead, is completely dead. They discontinued, and there's no new games coming out for PlayStation Vita. So that's kind of the downgrade of it all because I do have a PlayStation Vita. I don't have all the games for the console as well, but I had high hopes for PlayStation Vita. I thought it was going to be something great, um, but it is not. So uh, on that note, we are ending the Lucas Chat podcast. The E3 Sony Address 2016. Of course, we'll have other co-stars to do their other shows of Microsoft and Nintendo for the E3 press conference. But that was my take on the Sony E3 2016 press conference. Um, A lot of people said it was a snooze drag. A lot of people fell asleep on the press conference. Um, I don't I don't think it was a bad show. I thought it was okay show. Uh, It wasn't as great as, let's say, E3 2014. Uh, I thought E3 2014's show was great, um, but 2016, they had a lot of good perks. Uh, again, like I do say, I do wish they had, I do wish they advertised PlayStation Vita, but to see that there's no new games for it, that lets fans know again that this, that console is dead, as can, this continued. Nintendo has won the war for the Nintendo 3DS because there will be new games for the, the Nintendo 3DS, and there's no new games for PlayStation Vita, so... Nintendo, you have won that war in that handheld console uh, thus far because, you know, they just win it. Um, But hopefully you guys are excited for the games to come in the future. Of course, we do have some games coming out in the fall and for the winter of 2017. So hopefully, well, 2016, 2017, hopefully you guys are ready for those games. I'm, I'm excited for a couple games. I'm excited for Days Gone. I'm also excited for Call of Duty, and I'm also excited for Resident Evil 7. Um... So, that's, um, but those, those two games are very exciting. Those three games, um, hopefully you guys stay tuned for this weekend. Of course, there will not be no weekend, there will not be any weekend vlog, but we're going to be podcasting all weekend long for E3 addresses and covers and recaps. So, hopefully you guys stay locked for KLB Entertainment as we do further, further more E3 addresses for Nintendo and Xbox coming very soon this weekend. So, stay tuned. As of right now, I'm Kennedy Lucas. Logging out.